what would be your recommendations for developers who want to improve their skills and to know how to write like you, man? Read code. Read lots of code. Go and find projects that are in areas that are of interest to you and read them. Now, I have a lot of reviews in my blog. Yeah, uh, you're very famous about that. Yeah, and uh, some of them, uh, and the reason I'm saying that here is this is a database from uh, Microsoft. Uh, written in C sharp and uh, C plus plus, that does some fancy algorithm stuff. And I went, I read through the code, and you can see that I'm looking at stuff at this level. And I think it took me a few days to go to that. And it was a non trivial uh, uh, investment of time. But it means and again, you can see the number of uh, possible. This one was fun. There is a, a project called Lemon Graph, and a, I review how it works and why it's doing that and all sorts of stuff like that. And that, me that meant that I could much better understand how a, she looks so smug. Sorry. Like, <laughs> Uh, and that means that I could better understand how other people solve problems. Uh, now, if you're not likely to, find, to figure things out, you're likely to go and look at a piece of code and stare at that for an hour or two and just look, what? Uh, if you can debug through the code, try to understand what's going on there, uh, go and ask questions. In my experience, I have found zero cases, especially with open source, where you ask someone a deep technical question about how a piece of software works, and they weren't very happy to tell you about it. I in fact, I think there is one case uh, the game uh, descent uh, descent. Uh, um, I'm trying to remember who I read it a while ago that uh, it was open source the game engine, and they asked the team, what do you think we could learn from that? And the answer was, nothing. Don't look at that. It's important. Apparently, it was full of big hacks to get things working properly. But uh, beyond that, the idea was, the idea is that go and read and run to the debugger and ask questions, and you will feel stupid. Apparently, uh, uh, there is a code base I read in 2013. I read it to the point where I read every single line multiple times. I debugged throughout everything. And this week, I realized that I made a, an assumption that was fundamentally wrong, and it changed significantly how some piece of the software that I review worked. And I think, how could I ever have missed that? And yeah, I mean, it's really something ridiculous like that. Uh, so you will feel stupid at some point because you stay in the code and you don't know what's going on. But the key here is that the more code you read, the better you learn to work with patterns that transcend language and platform choices. You will understand, oh, you know what? Let me. Uh, show you something. Okay, some okay. Can, can can you can you zoom it? Yes. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. So this is the code that I'm writing, and. Uh, 
if you look at that, this is a, a piece of a code that is implemented in hash table using a, a open addressing with linear program. And most people only run into those terms at a data structure class. And then it's you know, one slide, moving on. You don't need to know that, use a dictionary. Okay, yeah, but if you want to do professionally, to be a professional, you need to understand one or two levels below where you're working. One of the things that I uh, uh, really enjoy doing, I was involved in the CASA project, uh, I about 15 years ago. Uh, and the lead project for uh, CASA was uh, called Hamid, Hamid Talk. And uh, he wrote a, a piece of software called Dynamic Proxy, which did runtime AL generation. And it was black magic. <laughs> like, try to imagine that you're looking at code that emits, uh, you know, uh, instructions. And if you had an error, you would get the uh, bad runtime error or the runtime would crash or stuff like that. And I remember spending so much time on that code base and working on it. I actually fixed bugs there eventually and got to a point where, oh, you know what? Runtime code generation, this is now a tool I can use. And, oh, you want to uh, uh, access a private field and we can't use reflection because that's too slow. Okay, let me pull up the uh, dynamic AI generator. And we can do that in like a uh, tenants of code. <laughs> and then you realize that if you haven't had that experience, what I'm doing is now black magic. I'm like, no, 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 this is not even gray magic. This is like uh, off white. <laughs> uh, 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 oh. yeah. So read code. Uh, that you have, uh, if you were a, a piano player, you would play. You would play and practice, you need to keep your hands sharp, you, need, you have to build muscle memory. In the same way, you have to be able to look at this and understand, okay, what's going on? Okay, I can, uh, I can see from the pattern of the code what it is doing. Uh, now, sometimes it's opaque. Sometimes people do uh, feel like what they need to do is they need to do fancy stuff. Like, what is that? I have something here. And that's, that's the range search of a bitmap of bits. And I honestly don't expect anyone to try to understand that without looking at the recommendation or a, a debugging of these particular types. But the, the whole idea is that uh, you want to know that when you get to something like this, it's like, okay, deep red, take a, a, take a sip of coffee. I know I can handle that because the the uh, the mindset is still being, I I I don't know how to handle that. That's again, that's black magic. That's someone else's code that does things that are not a, a, a immediately obvious. Can't handle that. Can't touch that. Let's code around that, which is suboptimal. 